Hey, hi everybody. Um, this is actually my first time doing uh, a webinar. I'm used to teaching where I can see you and you can see me, so it feels a little disembodied here at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. What I want to start with is uh, Quizlet. And if you are not familiar with Quizlet, it is... Are you thinking? Uh, it is a website uh, that allows you to create flashcards or you can search and find uh, sets that are already created by other people. And there it is right there, Quizlet, if you're not familiar with it. Um, this particular webinar is not about how to uh, create uh, flashcards in Quizlet or how to create any kind of material in any of the other um, programs or or websites. It's strictly on how you can engage with your students um, during like a Zoom meeting, for example, this type of meeting, or if you're using Google Meet. And I am going to start by showing you in quizzes, which wasn't a thing until uh, just this month. Uh, originally, if you played a Quizlet live game with your students, um, you had to be uh, in a classroom. They had to be next to each other. You would group them um, by threes and they would work together to compete. Um, they have just created it where the students can play a live game, but they are playing individually. So from wherever they are and they can play on their phones um, or they can play on a laptop or an iPad, but they are competing and they can see on your screen um, as they're playing, they can see who's in the lead. The one thing I will say is that there are some students that are just really good at these games and I played four games with my students last night and there were two students who just kind of flip flopped on who, you know, who won each one. So let me show you here one that I have. Uh, this is one that I created with some vocabulary uh, from a, a reading that we've done. And you can see here on the side, it has uh, under study. When I clicked on the, the units that I created, you have flashcards and then some other ways for you to study. And I'm gonna use my, sorry about that, make it easier for you to see with the spotlight. So you have flashcards initially and that's what pops up here where you click on it and then you've got your definition, however you've done it, or you can start with uh, the definition and then have the term and then you advance down this way. So these are just flashcards that I've created. In order to play a live game, you have to have what they consider to be at least six unique terms or unique definitions. So for example, I was teaching uh, gerunds versus infinitives and for all the answers I had either to do or doing. Well, that doesn't work because there aren't enough that are different. Um, but if you have at least six different unique answers here that are available, you can play uh, a live game. So I'm gonna go down here. So to go back, when you're on the Quizlet main page, once you've created your uh, account, you would just click on one of your sets that you, they call them sets. So I'm just gonna click on a vocabulary one that I created. Um, and then you're gonna scroll down all the way to where it says live right here. You click on live and then it asks how you would like to play. So the Teams one is the one that I mentioned earlier where your students, once you're back in the classroom, they would be in groups of three and they would compete. That's not available to play live. You have to click on individuals. Uh, so you want to go ahead and select that one. Uh, then it asks you, which is really nice, how you would like to play. So depending on how long your, uh, your answer is or definition is, you could start by the definition and then they would have to pick the term or you can start with the term. Um, so for mine, because I have some idioms and some prepositional phrases that are longer, um, when we played last night, we started with that and, oh no, actually, I'm sorry, we started with the definition because they were longer and then they had to pick. So I'm going to go ahead and select this first one where we start with the definition and you guys will be able to play uh, along and you'll see in just a second. Um, if you're on the phone for your students who, who have uh, their phones where they're playing, they can download the app, but they don't have to. Um, but the first time that they sign in, and if you're on a phone, you'll be able to see this for yourself. Um, it'll ask for their email, um, their name, and then their, I'm sorry, it's slipping my mind. I believe it's their grade. There are just three questions they zip right through and then they're fine, they're able to go. 
Um, otherwise, if you're planning on playing it a lot, you could advise them to go ahead and download the app. So I will go ahead and start here. We're going to select it where it starts with the definition and then you have to pick the term. I'm going to click there. I don't know if you saw me do that. I did that pretty quickly. Uh, if you go down here to options, because the music comes on as loud as, as um, whatever your meeting is, and so it's pretty loud. Um, but when you click options, it gives you the option to turn the music on or off. So I'm clicking it off, and then I'll X out. So there are two ways for you to join. The easiest way, if they have a phone, is to just open their camera, and then they just act like they're gonna take a picture of, of this code. And it will say at the top, a, a little tab will pop up and say, join you know, the Quizlet game and they just tap on that and uh, they will automatically be joined. And then if they do have to fill out the, you know, the email or anything, then they would do it at, at that time. Um, or you can uh, type in this code at this address, the Quizlet Live address. So we've got four people so far. Roz, this is Anthony from OTAN. Can I just ask a couple of questions while people sure. are joining? Sure. Um, are you currently using a free account or a paid teacher account? Oh, I'm sorry, it's free. I only do free. Yes, it is free. Okay. It's not and one then, of those free because of the, you know, the coronavirus. This Quizlet is free all the time. Okay. And then, um, so, um, Another person asked, can you use other materials previously posted from other instructors? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I mentioned at the beginning that you can either create your own or you can uh, you know, search for other material and then adopt it or use it exactly the way they created it. And then Roz, can you just remind us again um, to how we can join the uh, Quizlet activity? Uh, the Quizlet Live. So are you able to still see my screen? Yes, we can see the QR code on the right hand side and the code mm -hmm. on the left side. Exactly. So those are, are the, the, the two ways that you can do it. So you can either open your camera on your cell phone and you can scan the QR code and it will pop up immediately and say, do you want to join this? And you just tap and you're in. Uh, also, if you're in the app, uh, you see here in the app, you can, uh, it says, uh, you just tap play Quizlet Live and then scan the code if you downloaded the app for some reason, but you don't have to. Or if you're on a laptop or even on your cell phone or, or iPad, you would just go to this address, uh, the quizlet.live address, and then you type in this code. For some reason, and I don't know if it's on my computer, but the last number overlaps with the word join. And I don't know why that is. It's something with this layout, but uh, you just type in this number. And then at that point, it will ask you, you know, for your name and possibly your email and grade, just depending. Okay, Roz, so we have a couple questions. Um, sure. I guess we're also gonna find out, is there a maximum number of players? So that's a great question. Um, I didn't realize how many people would be uh, in the webinar. <laughs> so we're going to find out, apparently there isn't because it's still saying create the game. We haven't hit any kind of snags yet and we're at 68 and counting. So that I don't know. I'm gonna look on my phone and see if maybe that answer is available while we're... Okay. So I, I Googled it and apparently there is no maximum. They, uh, someone even noted that they played a game with 150 people. Roz, again, just to be clear, to participate in the game though, you don't have to create an account. You don't have to create an account, but it does ask you, I believe that first time for your email and your name, but you're not creating an account per se with like a password or anything like that. Um, so let's say for example, Roz, that um, they're on, so a student is using their phone for Zoom. Mm -hmm. So then how can they do this quiz? So how, how can they do both things at the same time? So they'll just open another tab. So they won't be able to still look at you in Zoom um, but they can, so you know, if you're in Safari in an iPhone or whatever it is in an Android and you're able to add another window, you just simply open another window and play it. Or if they have the app, they would just go out of, um, you know, out of the Zoom. They're not leaving the meeting, but they're just simply minimizing the meeting and then they're opening up the app or they're opening up another, another window in order to play the game. 
because they don't have to still see the meeting in order to know. The only thing is if they leave the meeting and, and you know they're on their phone and they can only have one window open on a phone. On an iPad, you can split the screen. There is a way for you to still have the meeting off to the side uh, and then bring up uh, you know Quizlet or another um, another window in order to go into the website. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, they don't need to see the screen is what I'm saying. So there's nothing that I'm going to be showing in the meeting that you'll need to refer to in order to at, answer the questions in the game. That's all you need to do is be in the game. So unlike, so for example, with Kahoot, Kahoot is an issue. It's not possible for you to play on your phone because you have to see the questions in the meeting, either in Zoom or Google Meet, and then you just answer with the corresponding color on your phone. So it's not possible to play on your phone right now. But in Quiz or Quizlet, uh, you're fine with one device. And again, they don't have to stay in the meeting. They can play the game and go out. The advantage to them having, say, I know in Windows 10, you're able to have multiple windows open kind of side by side, um, that you can do that. And of course, in an iPad, you can have them open, two windows open and side by side looking at them. Um, the advantage to that is it's going to show who's in the lead. And you're not, <clears throat> I don't know um, if you're on the phone with the way the questions are going, if you can kind of see that in, in real time because you're seeing the questions. Um, so you guys will be able to, to tell me that. That's one thing I hadn't thought about if you're, you know, if the students want to see, I mean, this is a huge group. So, but if you have a small class like mine, um, it's nice if you can kind of see. So I'm not sure on a phone if you're able to see who's in the lead, if that's, you know, of a concern for you. Um, so it would be nice if you could have them open just to see who's winning. So we've got a hundred right now. I don't know how many are in the in the meeting. I haven't looked. So we've got about 200 people. So I'm assuming the rest of you. So I'll talk as the rest of you continue to join. Um, as you're playing the game um, on my screen, you will be able to see who's in the lead. Um, the one concern with this, I may have to put you guys into teams because uh, normally if you play individually and you have a small number of students, um, what it does is it, um, it doesn't play by your name, it assigns you an animal. So alligator, tiger, or whatever, and that's who you are on the screen. So the other students who are playing, they don't know who's who, which is kind of nice if you're not doing well. Um, there's no embarrassment factor with that, it's just an animal that's showing. Um, but as you're playing the game, uh, if you miss any questions, it forces you to go all the way back to the beginning. So I'll say that again. If you miss a question, it could literally be the last question and it forces you to go back to uh, the beginning. And the game is over, unlike in some of the other um, applications, when that first person answers all of the questions, the game is over. So some of the other ones that you'll play, it will allow everyone else to continue, you know, until the end. So if you have students that are pretty quick, when they get to the end, it doesn't matter if the other students are, you know, only on the third question, the game is over. All right, so I apologize if anyone is still trying to join. You would not be able to join this after I start the game. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create. We've got about 108 people here. So you can see here. Uh, for example, Mark is now on the alligator team. Colleen is with the kangaroos, et cetera, et cetera. So look at that. So it, did, it was able to find over 100 animals to name. So there you go. So you can see here, it still has the code and things here. So maybe it will allow you um, on this. They, there have been some changes. Like I said, this has only been within the last couple of weeks that they've done it. Normally, once you start a quiz, quizzes live game, it doesn't allow you to join, but it is possible maybe for someone else to join. Um, so after I start the game, I'm even going to try to see if I can join afterwards just to kind of find out if that's the case. So I'm going to go ahead and click start and you'll see it's pretty easy. You're just going to. Oh. Okay, so these students are disconnected. So I'm going to go ahead and start the game. It's letting me know not everyone is ready, but since we're going to go ahead and play, I'm going to start the game anyway. So here's our screen. So you can see here as you all start answering, these are going to move over. There it is. So no names, just the animal names here. So 
So we have a winner. So it looks like Ivy was the first one. So like I said, it didn't matter where the rest of you were. The fact that she got there first, the game is over. So now at this point, you have some options. You can either exit the game completely. You can play with a new set. So this is where you go in and you pick a different set of questions, totally different set of questions um, to play, or you could play this exact same game again. Um, then it will start to show all of the flashcards that you went through if you wanted to review them with the students, and then you can just toggle through those. So it shows what you learned. And that is available for the students as well, for them to see the flashcards. So Roz, yeah, a couple of questions. Um, do you give any credit for their participation? And also maybe a related question, what do you see with any kind of stats or results? So this is a brand new way of playing Quizlet um, and it just became available a couple of weeks ago. So I've only played it once with my students. Um, I know that they really, really enjoy it. Um, and what I did is I played the same game four times because I know some students may really practice with the flashcards, you know, religiously and others may play just one time and that's not enough for retention. Um, but the fact that we're playing it over and over and then they get a little competitive, you know, when they see, because I noticed that as they play the game, like the multiple times, you'll see, because, you know, I know who's who, um, you'll see that they're moving a little faster. So they are learning. So there's nothing, there's no report or anything that gets generated on, you know, which questions they missed or how long they took to answer each one. But I just know uh, kind of anecdotally that just, you know, them playing four times that some of the students that seem to lag, that they got a lot farther and the, the, the race was a little closer uh, each time, more so than the, you know, certain students dominating. Um, but there's, I don't give them credit or anything for, for playing. It's just something that we do for an activity. I have other things that I do uh, to give them credit for. And that would be for them to go in, uh, in into Quizlet with the practicing part of it, but not the Quizlet Live. Is it possible to show us again how we get this organized? Oh, absolutely. I can, I can walk through all of the steps again. So I'm going to hit exit. Uh, in this particular game, we're going to go ahead and play another one. So to go back to when you first log into Quizlet, once you have your account, this is what it will open to. Um, it'll show you, you know, your recent um, uh, sets uh, is what they call them. And then you can, of course, view all. So let's just click on this other one that I have. So you just click on the one you want, or you can go into if you've set up folders. Uh, you can do that or, you know, your class, however you have it organized. And like I said, that's a, a separate lesson. Um, but I will go ahead and click here on this particular set. This is what they are. So, of course, we review them. What I have them do for a warm-up, I have them go through the flashcards immediately before we play it live. Uh, so that way they're, you know, it's kind of fresh in their minds. When you get to this screen here with the flashcard, the very last option here is live. So you just click on live right here. And then it asks how you would like to play. So again, teams is only when they're physically next to each other. So just look at that and remember they need to be together. So we have to play individually if they are online. So you click select on that. And then you have the option to either start with the definition or start with the term. So because of the interest of time, um, I found it that it's easier to start, especially if the definition is a little lengthy. It depends on you know, what level you're teaching. Um, but if your definition is kind of long, um, you might be better off starting with that and then they just guess the term versus, uh, because here it's gonna be longer because now they have to read through every single definition. Let's just click on that one um, to start with the definition this time instead. So you can see that it definitely slows the game a little bit. So again, you have your QR code that you can open up your camera on your phone or iPad and scan it. Or if you're on uh, your computer, you can just type in this address and then type in the code or they can download the app. And Roz, um, one yeah. other thing too. So um, maybe we need uh, to remind people or point out to people that um, you could have these two things going on simultaneously, meaning, but the, I think maybe to go back to that question that people said they were not able to see the questions. 
So the questions are not appearing in Zoom, right? They appear right. wherever wherever you're doing the Quizlet activity. Yes. Right. So I think maybe people were expecting that the questions would show up in the Zoom window, but that's not correct, right? Oh, no, 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 no. So what I mentioned, maybe where some confusion came is that if you play Kahoot, in Kahoot, you do have to be able to see the Zoom window because that's where the questions appear. But when you play Quizlet, everything is in that either the app or on the website that you're playing. It's going to flash the term and then you'll select from the options for the definition. So you're not, you, you don't even have to be in the meeting right now. You could, you know, have that minimized. If you're on your phone, you could be in a totally different window. The meeting is not, the only reason why you would want to still have the window open possibly uh, is so you can kind of see who's winning. But with, you know, with the number of players we have, um, you know, I don't even know if that's, if that's going to be an issue, if that's something you'd want to do. But yeah, you don't have to be in the meeting at all. And it is not going to allow you to join uh, after the fact. So if you don't join before um, clicking, you know, start, and it's because it is a race. So it won't allow you to join afterward, unlike some other apps. And I am going to go through quizzes in just a moment. And quizzes is one where the students can join, you know, all the way up until the other ones are almost finished. But this one in quizzes, it will not allow you to join after the game has started. Can you add pictures to the flashcards? So again, those are questions like for creating the, the flashcards. Um, I don't believe so. I'm not sure. Let me, since we're waiting for people to join, I'll just check. So if you click create, yes, you are able to add an image. Okay, great. And then there was a question if we could go back to before you um, start the quiz. So do you see in the upper right the copy game link button? Sure. There's a question about what that does exactly. So it just gives you this link here the, with the code and, and all of that. And I'll click on it. Maybe it'll show you. For example, if you just wanted to send it to your students in Remind um, for them to do if you think that might be easier. So it's just copied to my... Um, to my clipboard here and I'll just go to a Word document and show you what it looks like. So that's it. So if you were doing Remind or Talking Points or some other way that you communicate with your students and you think it might be easier. Um, you also in Zoom, I'm just thinking that uh, you could put it in the chat maybe and then it's not super difficult but if for some reason you have students saying I can't get to it, this might be an easy way to just Go ahead and throw that in there and then they can just click and go from there. We're ready? Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start another. I left the sound effects on. Um, I could hear where, you know, if you missed one, remember it goes all the way back to the beginning, which kind of adds to the excitement on that one. Okay, if there are no other questions on Quizlet Live, then I wanted to move on to, um, to the next site, if that's okay. Yeah, Roz, maybe just one question and then sure. we can switch over. So um, just a question about frustration level. So do you, do you encounter this with students and how do, you, how do you address that with the students? So the way that I address it um, is again, I'll start and make sure that we have reviewed all of the terms. This is not used as a surprise. You know, now we're gonna go ahead and play this live. Um, I make sure that they, you know, for example, on afford, uh, oops, or excuse me, for suggest, that they've seen this definition, that they've played it over and over. For Quizlet, it has the flashcards, it has a learn feature here um, where it gives them, the, it'll either give them the definition and then they go down and click the term or you can go to options um, and then have it start with uh, the definition instead. You click start over uh, and now it'll start with the term and then they can go down here and pick the definition. So it's already something that they've been, you know, practicing. I've given it to them for homework. And then again, I have them go through the flashcards immediately before we play the game. 
So they're already familiar with it. And then some, you know, have practiced on their own even more than that. Um, so that, that cuts down on the frustration level. If they're getting too frustrated, then that, you know, to me, that would signify that the, um, the material is too difficult. Maybe I need to take something out. Um, but I haven't had the students be frustrated um, with, with these at all. And this comes from a reading that they're doing as well. This is part of an entire unit uh, in this one. It, they're not just random terms that I have here. Again, um, I think you mentioned it, but the stats, what exactly do we, what information do we get with the stats that come in when the game any. is completed? You don't get any. That's, that's one of the down, you know, um, I can't even think of the word, but this is one of the, the not good things about this one is it doesn't tell you how students performed during it. It only tells you who came in first. Once, they, once a person finishes, the game is over and you don't get any information about how anyone did. You just find out who came in first. Okay. Um, there are some questions, Roz, about more of the um, like uh, working with the cards themselves. Do you want to answer those questions or? I can. Um, I do want to add something. Um, for people who are concerned about like, you know, what the stats would be, um, if you assign this in, you know, Google Classroom or whatever you're using, you can see how well they did um, as they go through each of these. I tell my students to go through each of these culminating in the test. So these are all the study features here um, for the cards. Uh, so you've got the flashcards, right? You've got the learn that I showed you a second ago um, where you get the term and then they have a multiple choice to guess what the definition is. Um, they have a right. At a previous time. Which is, um, it can be, it has the written prompt and then you also can click on. At a previous time. Uh, and then if you, this is the, uh, the right. If you go to the spell, this one, they don't even have the written definition. You're just getting the audio prompt. No doubt. And then they have to type that out. And then it has your definition down here. Uh, and then the last, oh, that is the last study. So those are the four study things. And then uh, Quizlet generates a, a test based on the, the flashcards. And you have the options of how you want it to be. The typical option is three questions of four different types. So you'll have, you know, your written questions here where it gives the definition uh, and then they have to type in the, um, the term. Then it has a matching section here, right? It has multiple choice questions. I guess it depends on how many terms you have to. Uh, and then true or false questions. And you can go over here to options and change the question types however you'd like to do it. So I tell my students to make sure when I give them the assignment, you know, for the week on the vocabulary, to make sure that they, you know, at least get to, you know, maybe the right. But I tell them if possible, go all the way down to the test. It also has a couple of games. It has a concentration, which is uh, the match. You click start game. And now you have the definitions and the terms. And all you do is you just click on the term, such as mentioned, and then you drag it to the definition or vice versa. Once you drag it to that, you just simply let go of your cursor and if it turns green and disappears, it's correct. If it's wrong, say for example, if I put melt here, it just th turns red and throws it back out. And they can play this over and over and over and it has the time on the side. So if they finish playing and then they wanna play again, they can, um, again and it'll say beat your previous time. So that's kind of a fun way for them to practice uh, as well. Uh, and then the last one they have, uh, the only other game besides the match, because you'll see it's here under play, besides the match is gravity. And this is kind of like, what was it, Galaga or I um, can't think of the other one, uh, Centipede or something where it's like an old school, uh, Let's start with the definition. So you, you have the options. Um, you can start with all of the things that they've studied. You can start with the term or the definition and you can select the difficulty. So I'll just leave it at medium and we'll go, let's go. And it tells you to watch out for red asteroids. If you miss it twice, it'll destroy your planet. You click start. And then you'll see this asteroid is gonna start coming down and it has the word here and then they have to type the definition. So that's probably too difficult. Probably want to, let me pause it. Um, 
So I'm going to change it to where it starts with the term instead of that. Um, and click start. And so now it's going to come down with the definition and then they have to type the term and hit enter and then it'll disappear. If they enter the wrong thing, uh, then this asteroid will keep coming toward Earth. So let's just say no, no, no. And then once it hits, now they've, it hits the Earth down here, it's too late. So they have quite a bit of time. Any questions about the, the games? That they, oh, and it showed the correct answer. I'm sorry, I clicked out of it too quickly. It'll show them what the correct answer was, what they should have written. Um, let's see here. If you, you cannot do team because they have to be physically near each other. You have to do individual play. And it will tell you that on the Quizlet website as well, that in order to play remotely, it has to be individual. This does have to be a competition. They can practice on your own if, you, if, they, if you assign. Uh, the flashcards, they can't play live on their own. Live has to be competitive, um, but they can practice these on their own. And I am about to go over these other ones. Let's see here. Uh, so you can create your own, your own flashcards or you can use ones that other people have created that are in the database here. And I teach transition, so advanced level students. It's, you know, reason why the words, the, the definitions are a little difficult, um, but I've taught all levels. So there are ways for you to make this friendly to whatever your level is. You know, we've shown you can add images. Um, you can certainly have simpler, you know, vocabulary in order to make this work. Um, you also are able to practice with audio prompts. You cannot in live, you're not able to do the audio prompts in live. It's just going to be, you know, the, the print. Um, but there are lots of ways to, to do this. So that was Quizlet. I'm going to X out of it. This is quizzes, quiz and then I-Z-Z, -Z, in case you're not familiar with it, and it's just quizzes.com. And again, it's free and not just free because of the quarantine, it's free all the time. So I've had this account uh, for a while. Uh, this functions the same um, as most of the other uh, learning sites. You can either create, you can see here, you can create your own quizzes um, or you can go here and find a quiz um, that meets your needs and you can either use it as is or you can make changes to it and make it your own. Uh, what I like about quizzes, it lacks the excitement of playing a live game, which I find breaks up the monotony, especially playing on, you know, online, having online meetings, it can, you know, get kind of dull, um, which is why I like Quizlet, the one I just explained for that, because you have this, you know, this competitive nature to it. Um, with this one, when you play games that are live, um, they're playing at their own pace. So it's a little nicer if you have students that are all at a different level because they are able to finish the quiz regardless of, you know, you notice in Quizlet, once one person finished, game over. With quizzes, it doesn't end until everyone has finished, although you will still have, you know, people who place first, second, and third, and it will tell you the results. Um, but this one lacks kind of that, that excitement, you know, and competitiveness um, that Quizlet has. Uh, the benefit to this, and you'll see at the end, is it will generate a report. You can go in at the end and see which questions uh, particular students missed. You can uh, find out which questions were difficult pretty much for all of your class, ones that took a very long time to answer. It really gives a detailed uh, report uh, that I'll show you. Uh, and in quizzes, you can create your own class, you can add your students on it, uh, and then it's very easy uh, in quizzes, when you create a quiz, you are able to um, assign it from here. You don't have to do a lot of copying and pasting. Uh, you can uh, create a quiz and assign it in Google Classroom for future plays, where they can play over and over, or with the way that we are uh, gonna do it for this webinar, you can play it live during your class. So I'm gonna click on my quizzes, and these are ones that I've created. Uh, and so this is one from that, the same vocabulary. So I go across all of these platforms. So we've got the flashcards, and then I have, uh, in this one, this is where they're having to um, use the word, you know, and apply it in a different situation instead of just, you know, what's the definition. So when you go into either, either finding a quiz or clicking on your own, they all look like this. So you just wanna go ahead and click on it. 
and then you have these options. So you can see down here, you can play live and it tells you start a multiplayer game. So you can play it live. I mentioned you can assign it as homework and they can do it. Or if your students, if you've created a class, your students can go in here and they can practice on their own. And again, all of that is, you know, quizzes is a separate lesson all, all on its own. But for us, we're going to play live. So when you click on the, um, go back here to the main page or home page, you just either click on something that opens up, you can find a quiz or I'm gonna go into my own. Click on the quiz itself. These are all separate quizzes. And then you go right here to play live. Now you have some options. Um, and you can see as you scroll down, there's a lot before you hit continue. So you don't just, unless you've already had it set where you, know, you don't make any changes depending on the situation, um, you won't click continue until you um, set your criteria. So the first thing you do is right here, pick your game mode. So to play live, you only have two options. Um, you can play in teams. So again, it's self-paced. So they're still answering at their own pace, but then the scores are grouped by, um, by teams. So you can do that, you know, if you have uh, an even amount of students. If you don't, what it does, say you have seven students, it will kind of add points to make it where it's equal, you know, as though they had four players on each team. So it doesn't matter if the team numbers are, are you know, uneven, if you want it to do by team. I don't, I don't find it, I never play it by team because um, I like the individual uh, reports and things. And because this isn't a game where, you know, they can really feel like they're competing. Um, they're just going through and answering it at the end. It'll say who came in first, second, or third, but it doesn't have that, that same weight. Um, so I usually don't play by teams. It's just not exciting in that way. So normally we play in the classic way. And the classic way is just they complete individually. Um, the test mode is, is different than, than live play. This is where instead of having some of the features, they'll show uh, memes uh, in between the questions. They have you know, some fun features and things um, when you play the classic way, if you opt in for that. When you play the test mode, it's just straight questions. Um, and I, I, I don't use the test mode. I do testing uh, through like Google Forms or, or you know, different platforms. So I don't use the test mode. For live play, I recommend either the classic uh, or the team. Now you can go in and if you've created a class in quizzes, you can go here where it says assign to class, hit select, and then your class will show up and you can see the Google Classroom emblem and you would just click there and next and then it will assign it to all of them. Or uh, you can, uh, yeah, it'll assign it in Google Classroom and they'll go through Google Classroom, I'm sorry. Here you have advanced settings, so you can see the arrow um, right here, and this is kind of a new feature. You would just click on the down arrow if for some reason it isn't already open um, for the advanced settings. And this is where you can change pretty much everything about the game. So the first one, it talks about student attempts. This is how many times can they take the quiz? So if you are doing it uh, live in the classroom, you want to set this for one time. The reason being, you cannot get the test results until everyone is finished. Uh, and one time I had this set, you'll see it allows for unlimited play. One time I had it set for unlimited play and one student, when he finished, he kept going in to play it over and over. So I could not get the results uh, get the report that I needed. So I set it for one time when we're playing live. Now, if you assign it for homework, then of course you want to make it unlimited so the students can, you know, can play over and over. Um, but for the live, we're going to leave it at one. For the required to log in uh, to limit attempts, it's showing you that they will have to log in. So that way it's only one time. That way you'll know who played. So when you sign up, I think it will require you to put in your email. The name factory, this is, uh, you know, if you have a problem with students, you know, typing in inappropriate things, you would, you know, do this, but we all teach adults. So this usually isn't an issue with them putting names that would be inappropriate. Uh, this next one is showing the answers in the game. So I leave this on. Otherwise, when they answer a question, it will just go to the next question. Um, but you want them if they, if they you know, 
type in or hit the wrong answer, you want them to know what the correct one is in real time. So it will show them immediately, no, you picked X and it should have been Y. Um, so I leave that on to show the correct answers. Uh, this one I also leave on so that at the end of the game, um, they are able to go back and review all the questions and answers on their end. I usually go over the answers um, after them, after the, the game together um, with the class, especially if you know they've missed quite a few. Um, but this allows them on their device to go back and review those questions and answers if you have it on. The gameplay settings. So power-ups, and you'll see, I'll leave it on. Um, it will allow the students to get bonus points. It'll say, you know, if you get the next answer right, you get 50 extra points or, you know, things like that. So it just adds a little element of fun to the game. So I usually leave that on. Uh, for the timer, um, students will see a countdown because in quizzes, um, when you uh, either create your own quiz or you adopt a quiz that someone else has created, you choose how long the students have to answer the question. So if it's 45 seconds, they're going to see a countdown timer. So you definitely want to do that so they'll know when the time is almost up. Uh, you want them to be able to see the leaderboard and in quizzes, it will show the actual names, not, you know, it's like some animal representative, you know, it's just going to show their names on the leaderboard. Shuffle the questions is not really necessary, um, so I'll turn that off. That would be maybe if the students were playing in the classroom, you don't want them to be able to look over and they're all on the same questions. So that's not necessary. Same thing with shuffling the answers, with changing the order of the answers, that's not necessary really either uh, with playing online. This one is nice, this redemption question. Um, if for some reason a student you know, has missed uh, and you know, gotten questions wrong, it allows them to try to do it again. What it'll do is it'll come back later on and give them the opportunity to answer it again. So we'll leave that on. And maybe when you play, um, you can intentionally miss a question because I know you guys will get them all right. Uh, but you intentionally miss a question when you play and that way you can see that it'll allow you to answer that question again. Uh, and then you also have the option to show memes, some funny pictures after each question. I usually have that off. That just seems to be unnecessary. Um, these are, you know, these learning apps are kind of catering to K through 12. Um, and so that's why that's there. But for my students, I usually leave that off. Okay. Any questions on this page before I start the game? Roz, can you, um, just a clarification. So you did mention um, the connection to Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. can, you, can you just talk again, how do you create that connection so that you could use Google Classroom uh, for quizzes? Okay, so let me go back to my quiz. So say I want to assign this to, to Google Classroom. I go ahead and click on the quiz that I want to, um, to assign. I go right here, assign for homework. And then you can see it opens up a screen. And again, you don't just click continue unless everything is already set. You'll have to go through all of the settings. So the first thing is, is learners should complete the quiz. So you set your deadline and I think it goes about a month out. Yeah, it goes about a month out. Um, and so let's say I want it done by May 1st. I click on that and it tells you how many days and you know, from now you can set the, the deadline time. So let's say I want it done by, you know, midnight and you can change AM or PM. If that's all you need to do, you click continue. But if you want to assign it to your uh, Google Classroom and you've created the class, right, it's very easy and I'll show you after, um, you just click classes and you click create class and it will allow you to create a classroom. Um, you just click select here for assign to a class. And then you just click the Google Classroom that you wanna assign it to. So click next. And it's already done. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's not done until I click assign game. It's already got that in there and then I can click. It shows you this quiz will be assigned to one class and it shows the class and then when I click assign, it would be there. If for some reason I wanted to name it, I could click here and then I could you know, write in what the name of the assignment is and then if I wanted to add a description, I could. And then it also says, when should this game start? You can either have it available immediately or you can schedule just the day, not the time. Oh, no, I'm sorry, you can do the time. I normally don't do it this way. I normally do it from Google Classroom. Maybe that's um, why this is not 
making sense to me at the moment. Yeah, so you can go in and you can change your time and so forth here and then hit next. And then once you hit assign game, it will tell you that it's already been assigned to, uh, to your Google Classroom and that they'll notify um, the students for that. And then if you go into your Google Classroom, you would be able to see it um, and I'll just show you. So if I go into classwork, you'll see it's right here at the top. And it will give them a link for their phone and a link for the website. And then of course, once it's in Google Classroom, of course you can, you know, if you decide, you know what, I don't wanna have it, you know, scheduled for this time or do anything, you can make changes and edit that in Google Classroom. Any questions on any of this? So um, Roz, you also, there, there was a question about um, besides Google Classroom, there are other ways to share the quizzes, right? Sure, you can, um, if you wanted to uh, just get the link, um, let's see here, it should have, so that's the same settings. So the same settings for the live game, the student attempts, the answers, the power-ups, et cetera, all of that, they're the same settings. Um, so if you don't want to assign it to, um, to a classroom, um, you would just click continue and now you have a link. So this is another way to share it with Google Classroom. Um, you can either click here on the Google Classroom, share the link, or here you ask the participants to open this joinmyquiz.com and enter um, this code. So right here is where you would click the link. So you can either click here and it will share it automatically to your Google Classroom, or you click here and now it shows you down here the link is copied, share and paste it on your favorite tool. So if you have, you know, say Remind, you click Remind and then you just put it in there or talking points or whatever, however you're communicating with your students. And you could also um, share it in the Zoom chat, right? If you want, if you were Absolutely. in Absolutely, absolutely, okay. yep. Okay. Um, you're probably going to mention this, but um, quizzes will work on any device? Yes, and you don't need an app. No app needed. Okay, great. And with quizzes, um, again, it works the same way as Quizlet. You do not have to be able to see the, the meeting. So you don't have to still have Zoom open where you can see it in order to play the game. You can on your phone, just simply go to, you know, another window or on the laptop, you can just click out of that, open another tab and start playing it. And then when it's done, you can go back to the meeting because all of the questions and answers will show uh, in quizzes. Okay, so play live. I'm going to hit continue for a classic game. And if you would like to join, uh, it shows you use any device. Go to joinmyquiz.com. This one doesn't have the QR code, so you will have to type in the game code. So here's your link as well. If for some reason you got to this point, you can copy the link and put it in, in your Zoom or your Google Meet. It even has Remind, you can see right here. If for some reason someone's using a Canvas account, you could do it there, and they are free. So you, you have the little picture next to it, um, but it's going to be the person's name. And you see if you hover over it, you can remove the player. I, I've never had to do that, but just know you have that option. Rods. Yes. Okay, some people are saying that um, they need to, they're getting a prompt that they need to be registered to play the game. So it's just going to ask you your email and your name, and I believe if you're a student or a teacher. So you don't register in the sense of filling out a long form and putting in a password, but it gets just some basic information from you for the first time. So it's, it's almost like they're prompting us to create an account. That's weird, that has not. So I went to people in the meeting. I don't know if all these people already had used this before, but um, you want a laptop or is this happening to people on their phones? So I'm actually walking through the steps on my phone and I went to joinmyquiz.com. Uh-huh. 
Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm actually getting the prompt to put in some account details. I think they want me to create an account. Okay. So somebody I'm, says, um, but it's I don't remember creating an account. So mine, I joined the game too, and I was able to go straight into it. Um, but I, I mean, walk through the steps, Anthony, on mine, it would do it immediately. So I don't remember what they were. I know my daughter did it. Um, she did a practice with me and I thought what she had to put in was her email and her name. I didn't remember her having to create an entire account. Okay. It could be that um, when they got to the prompt to um, about putting in, let me see if I can go back to that step, okay. um, to join the game and they put in the code. Some people might have um, then just put in their Google account information and maybe that's how they just automatically. Oh, it could have been. Yeah. Yeah, but if you, you got your password for your Google account, right? But I just said yeah. no. I, oh, I just use a regular email wrong. address, so okay. it could be, yeah, it could be that Google connection then. Yeah, it probably yeah, Google's in everything. So you know, if you, and that might have been it. I think when I got to it, I just tapped my school email, um, and allowed it to uh, to come in from that. Yeah, if you put in that you're a teacher, it will ask you that. It really wants you to just open. I mean, it's a free account. If you don't want to do that for today, then you can just watch as the students play. But um, I mean, it's not, my students have all been able to play and, and, and log in and that, you know, it doesn't seem to be that, that much information that it requires. Okay, but it is a good reminder to test it out first, right, Roz? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, I knew that it would ask for a little bit of information or they could sign in through their email. I did tell the students that, but I told them they seem to be more concerned with having to download an app. They didn't mind having to give their email and their name. They just didn't like having to download an app. Are we ready, you think, to start or? Yeah, why don't we give it a go? I know that people are still having a little, some people are still having trouble, but maybe in the interest of time, if you want. Okay, so, well, this is the good news. So you can still join after the fact. So once I click start, and you finally get it, you know, get registered, you'll still be able to join in. So I'll go ahead and click. So for all you teachers, if you want to mute that speaker up here at the top, use the speaker button. And if you are able to still see the Zoom room, you can see the leaderboard. So you see the names and you'll see the questions that they've answered and how quickly and so forth. And then whoever is, you know, the, the movement here, you can see those as well. You can set it to show only the top five if you wanted to do that. Shows you the number of players with the rank. And then up here at the top, it's doing this little running ticker um, on the completion and then how accurate the answers are. If you are curious and, you know, while they're playing, you say, well, how are the question's doing, you can click the questions tab and it will show you for each individual question, the average time it's taken for them to answer and how many have gotten it right and how many have missed it. So this game will not end until everyone who's playing has completely. So if, if you've signed into the game, I see some people down here whose names are listed. Um, like Anthony, you're on here. If you're not going to play, oh, you are going to play. Yeah, because if you don't answer, uh, Jean and Jill, if you don't answer, okay, um, because otherwise the game will not end and I can't get to the reports. I'll have to remove you from the game if you're not going to answer. And so all of these people have finished and you'll get different colors. Um, oh, no, it's just showing all purple. So it's pretty much everybody. So once the, the, uh, the last people finish, it is going to pop up. You can't control how long this lasts, but it will pop up and show you who plays first, second, and third. But that flashes on the screen. I've never figured out a way to freeze that. Um, but after it does that, then it'll bring up the leaderboard again, but it'll show kind of the podium. Uh, and you'll see that in just a minute um, once everyone finishes. And you'll notice as you were playing that it showed you the leaderboard. So you knew where, you're, where you were um, on the list there. Let's see. So if for some reason you're playing this and maybe you have a larger class or students are having issues, um, it shows you right here that we have three people uh, who haven't finished. 72 out of 75 are done. But if you have an issue with one of them, you can do what I did and you can just click the X here and you can remove them from the list and then uh, the quiz can finally end. 
and you can get your um, your results. So Russ, can I can I just ask a question? Join. Yeah, please don't join because um, it's going to take you a while to get through all the questions, and we want to go ahead and show the, the results so I can move on to the last thing. So I'm actually going to uh, remove you, Sandra. I apologize. It doesn't look like you've answered a question yet, but I want to go ahead and get to the results. Roz, can I ask a question? Sure, please. Someone asked, how do I know which grade level each player selected? Which grade level? Oh, I see where you're... I, you know, that I don't know. I don't think that information is available to you. Uh, but it doesn't matter anyway because they, they're going to play whatever material you select. So it has no bearing on the material. It's not going to change the level of the questions or the questions or whatever you give them. And Roz, do you happen to know, um, was the time that it took for a person to answer a question factored into the results? Yes. Because it's, this is still a race, it's just a self-paced race. So the person who wins is the person who answered the questions um, correctly the fastest. So I'm gonna manually end the game. Normally what happens, it's because we have people joining later and then people who didn't answer all the questions. But if your students go through and they answer all the questions as soon as it's over, uh, the results will pop up. So I'm gonna click end game and hopefully this will still show the results. Here we go, first, second, and third. Anthony, you came back and placed third, good for you. So first is Maria and second Sherry. So that flashes, right? Um, and then, oh nice, look at this, mastery party. So it's showing all of you who got 100% that goes, so it's kind of nice, right? The, the little graphics are nice. Now, this is what I normally see because my students tend to not get 100%. So I have never seen that before. Um, but what's nice about the reports and quizzes, this first one you get is class accuracy. It tells you how many, you know, the percentage that they got um, correctly. You can also share a practice link from here, or you can go back into the main part of quizzes uh, and assign it as homework. It shows you which question was the toughest. So which one was answered incorrectly? Um, and so if you guys all answered them right, if you had missed a few, and I, I kind of wanted you to miss at least one. I know teachers like to get them all right, but if you had missed at least one, you would have seen that you would have had an opportunity to re-answer that question. Um, but it would show you here which one was the hardest and which one took the longest to answer. And then it gives you an interesting fact, like it shows the average time taken was eight seconds. You can download the results here. Uh, you can play the game again. Uh, you also have this button here you can click to review the questions. You can go over and exit. So all of these options up at the top. Um, this is something that you probably aren't going to show your class, but you could scroll down here to the overview. And this is where you can look. And this report stays in quizzes. So even once you X out of this game, I'll show you. When you go back to your uh, main page for your account, you can click on reports and you'll still be able to see this information. So like I said, all of you guys, did anybody miss any? Okay, so if, any, if someone had missed one, um, you could go through and you would see which questions um, they missed. So then you can also click on an individual student and you would be, so I, I'm not gonna be able to do it because you guys didn't miss any. Um, so let me show you, actually, I'm gonna exit out of this so I can show you a proper report. Um, let me go into one. Okay. So this is one that my students had done. So you can see they had 83% accuracy. Uh, seven out of 12 students completed it. So it defaults to the players. So you can see here, it lists my students and it shows you, you know, the accuracy and what their score is. So say I want to go down here and I want to find out which ones, you know, he missed. You just click anywhere on this student and the red would be, or the pink, would be the ones that they missed. Uh, and it tells you how many they got incorrect and you can scroll down and you can find out which ones this particular student missed and maybe find out what's going on with them if it's a consistent problem, right? Um, so you can do it that way. When you're finished looking at this student, you just click anywhere and it'll take you back to the report by players. If you wanna find out maybe, you know, which questions, are tripping up you just click the questions tab and you can go through and it's a really nice visual right the charts you've got this one shows you only 14% missed it but look at this one you know almost 30 
percent miss this particular one. So you realize, hey, everybody, remember, consider uses a gerund or whatever. You can see the ones that are easy and so forth, um, which is a really nice feature. Um, and then you have kind of an overview where you can look at the students and then it has the students and then also by question, which is nice to kind of show you, you know, maybe on this one that three people miss. And when you hover, it shows you the question. So I really like this one for the, uh, for the reports that it gives them because the reports stay on your account. You don't lose them. Standards applies more for like math and other K through 12 things that but we don't, you know, have a standards that we can really apply or that, or I don't anyway, for, for ESL. Um, but that is your reports tab for all of the ones that you've played. I mentioned earlier, you can create a class and it makes it easier. The classes tab is right here. All you do, you can either, so it, mine has update Google Classroom. What it normally says is import Google Classroom. Uh, and you click that and it will uh, bring over your students from there. Um, or you can click here and create a class. Are mm -hmm. students able to view a personal report so they can see how they did or are the reports only for teachers? That is an excellent question. Um, yeah, you can email it to them. Yeah. So it says email to parent, but it's because it's a K through 12 thing. So the parents email is their email. Um, so yeah, you could email it to them. So that may be the only way for them to get it. I don't know if, if they would just have access to it. What I do is I have it in Google Classroom. Um, and so the scores are posted in Google Classroom, but not this type of report where it shows each individual question. Okay, so the last one, the reason why I just did it last is because I'm sure most of you are familiar with Kahoot. You've you know, heard of it. I think it's one of the first ones I use for sure. Um, within Kahoot, so this would be you know, the home page here with my account. And by the way, everyone gets a premium account right now. So there are some really nice features. I don't know how long it'll go after the quarantine, but um, I have a premium account now. Um, if you go into Kahoot, the, the problem with this one is if they only have one device, meaning a phone, if they only have a phone, which is pretty common, they are not able to play Kahoot Live. You would have to assign what they call a Kahoot Challenge, uh, and that's where they you know, do a self-paced game. Uh, in order to play Kahoot Live, they are gonna need either a laptop or they need two devices. So if they can have a cell phone, which is fine, but they are gonna need to have either an iPad or a Chromebook or something open. The reason being is that um, in the meeting itself, the Zoom or Google Meet, um, on your screen, when you go into Kahoot, it will show the questions and then it will show the answer choices um, because Kahoot is, for the most part, it's multiple choice, but they do have different types of, of questions that you can, um, that you can put in. Um, but the answers go by color and shape. So, you know, red triangle, blue circle, et cetera. And what they do when they play, when they log in to play, all they are doing is matching the color, but they don't have the answer if it's only on their phone. So for example, on the laptop, they see the question and then they see the answer choices. Well, if the answer choice is red, then all they do is, you know, click that corresponding color on their phone. Um, but if they only have a phone, they haven't come up with a way for you to play it um, live anyway. If they have an iPad, um, they have a way on the iPad where they can have the meeting open. And then you just go at the bottom. And I'm going to show you because they just came up. Someone just did a video on this. You can see it even says new. Um, but it shows how they can play on one device, not a phone but it shows how you can do split screen on a Chromebook or any laptop. And that's where you just have, you know, you minimize your window and you split the screen. So for example, if I minimize this and then I bring my Google Classroom over, and I don't know if that was too fast for you, I can be happy to do that again, but you just go up here and you minimize the size of the main window, and then you just click on whatever tab you want and you drag it. So say, for example, this is my, uh, my meeting, and this is what I'm going to play on. And I'll do that actually um, for the game so you can see uh, what it looks like when we play Kahoot if, you have a, uh, if you're playing on a laptop. You can do it on an iPad, um, and it shows on the iPad you do the slide over function, and I'll just...
so that was a nice visual, albeit pretty fast. Um, but basically on, the, on the, the, the laptop, you see you just minimize it. If you're on the iPad, then once you're in the meeting, you just hover your, um, you know, go down to the bottom and, and bring up your, um, another window or you bring up whatever the, uh, the Kahoot app actually, I think is, is the way you would have to do that. Or you'd have to open up Safari or if you're on some other kind of a uh, tablet, you do that. But that is the only way to play Kahoot Live um, at the moment. So any questions before, oh, actually I have to log in. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back in my account. So when you are on the main page, and I hope everybody can see this, let me minimize this. So my other screen's a little bigger for you. So when you're in your Kahoot, which is, you know, again, free, you just click on your Kahoot, whichever one you wanna play. So let's go ahead and do Jaren's and I'll click on it. You just click on whichever one it is. You also could click, I'm sorry, got too many things open. You could click play from that. Um, but if you want to go in and take a look at anything, you're, you're able to do that. If not, um, you can click play here as well. So a couple different ways to click play. Then you would choose the way you want to play it. So remember that for the self paced you would click assign and then you can assign it in Google Classroom, etc. cetera. Um, but it shows you here for virtual classrooms, you're in a teaching mode. So play a live game together over video. So I'm going to click teach. Then you have your game options. Um, so team versus team, that would be shared devices where you know you have three students together. So this is going to be a classic, right? Because your students are not together. Um, then for your game options, um, you can give them the option to practice difficult questions after the live game if you wanted to do that. It can also they all give you the option to, you know, for the computer to pick the name if you're having an issue with them picking inappropriate ones. You can change the, you know, the type of music or something that is being played. You can randomize the order of questions and answers if you want to do that. Uh, but most of the time, I don't, I don't click any of these. You can have it where it automatically moves through questions instead of showing the leaderboard. Um, but I usually leave the leaderboard in there. It adds to the competitiveness. So you want to go ahead and click Classic. And then Ready to Join it gives them a And they would just go to Kahoot it or the app and type in the game pin. And as far as I know, Kahoot doesn't make you enter any information. You just go to Kahoot and unless they've changed it, uh, once you go here, you just type in your game pin and you're, you're set. So over here, so if you were gonna play for your students, they're gonna have to do this with a split screen and they'll go to Kahoot, play Kahoot which is enter game pin here. And this same game pin I'm gonna enter here. And hit enter, enter the nickname, and then hit okay go and I should pop up over here. I did, I'm right here. And now I'm in. So this way they can see the questions on this screen and the possible answers and then the corresponding you know, buttons over here that they would click. Okay, we've got 31 in um, with Kahoot. You would not uh, be able to join after either. So we'll, maybe when we get to 40, we'll go ahead and click start, I guess, since you guys are joining pretty quickly. Okay, we're at 40. Oh, and we're going. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, click start. So you can see this is what it would look like for them on their phone. So you see, they don't get the question. And then they've got the potential answers here, and then they have to look on the phone the corresponding color and shape. So it's just showing them this until everyone has answered the question or run out of time. Here's your time countdown, one second, and we're done. And then it shows you how many got the question right, how many got it wrong. If you wanna take time and review after each particular question, you can. And then for your student, they're gonna see over here that they got it right, uh, the number of points, and then the place that they're in. Okay, you have to manually click next if you've set it that way. So now we have again our, our leaderboard.
You have the option to end the quiz here or to keep going. So now we have our next question. So for my students, I have, you know, quite a few seconds on here because they're still the mastering these. Um, but you can have it set for 10 seconds, just depending on um, what the material is. It's just going to give us a summary at the end. I can end the game and it would show it, um, but there are 20 questions here. So I'll go ahead and end the game here. So it's going to show the podium. This is what you would get at the end. Shows you came in third. But this is new. The graphics are new. Okay. I like it. Da da! Drum roll. Maria again. And then it gives you runners up, which is nice. It didn't give that information before. So now with this one, you don't really get the, um, uh, you know, the report like you get in quizzes. So here's the report. You'll see it's a little different unless they've updated it. They've been doing a lot of updates to these sites, so I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, so since no one missed anything, I don't know what it would really show here. It has a similar graph, um, but you can see the reports are much more detailed in quizzes by student. Um, with this one, it's just you know, how many they got right, um, and then by each question, the percentage they got it right, but not who got what right. And then here's another graph, so that would be it. Okay. All right, I know that was kind of rushed on that, but any, any final questions, anything I can answer? Well, it's just a question, you know, you've shown us three different um, uh, apps today. So sure. kind of in general, how long do you find does it take to actually create a game or an activity in any one of these? So it really depends on what you're teaching. Um, what I normally do is pull from, um, from the textbooks I use, like for the grammar, I pull from the Azar grammar, um, or uh, for the reading, I pulled from the password book that I was using. Um, it depends if you want to add um, any kind of, you know, image or anything, then that might be a little more you know, time consuming to get those pictures in. Um, but if you're concerned with time, what you want to do, all of these quizzes, uh, Quizlet and Kahoot, they all have a database of teacher created, you know, uh, you know, assignments, varied, some that have just audio prompts and other things at all levels. And you can just go in and find one that someone has already made. And you can look at it, you can see what the answers are before you assign it to your students. And that cuts down on the time. Um, and then if you find, well, I don't like this question, you can do a, you can start by doing a few edits. I've been doing it so long, I probably can create one in about 30 minutes from start to finish. But I've been doing it a while. I'm very comfortable with the technology and, and everything. And I have a lot of things saved already. Um, but I would say in the beginning, just take other people's, you know, work and, you know, and make it your own or use it as is until you get, um, you know, more comfortable. But, you know, maybe 30 minutes to an hour, depending on what I'm, planning to make from the time I create it to assigning it in, uh, in Google Classroom. Okay, Roz, thank you so much um, for all this and you're getting a lot of good feedback in the chat. Um, oh, thank good. you Nia, for the presentation. Um, people had fun doing the activities today. So thank you for Yay. showing us that. Yay. Um, thank you guys so much for coming. I appreciate it.